Hello, friends. Welcome to So-Called Writers, a Daily Planet podcast. This is the show where Michael and I write fiction and try to learn from what we wrote. Uh, that's right, Matt. The game is simple. We generate three random nouns on a random gen- word generator, spend 30 minutes writing a short story that features those three words, and then discuss the stories we wrote and try to learn something from the experience. Yep, and today's three words are parallelogram, skirt, and notoriety. I don't use the word parallelogram very often. No, no. I, I was pretty sure that I remembered exactly what a pal- parallelogram was, but I'm going to yeah. admit that I looked it up just to make sure that I didn't embarrass myself. I, I didn't look it up, but is it just a rectangle where the two sides, the opposite sides are parallel, but not 90 degrees? Yeah. 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 Correct. I don't think it was important to anyone's story, to be honest. Yeah, I think you're right. But um, it just evoked vague, like, shape, math. Uh, kind of intelligentness. Yeah, it was interesting to see how different people used um, used the the prompt this week. I thought this was a uh, this is one where the words were kind of weird enough that almost everyone had a very different take on it. I, I don't think there was any like obvious interpretation of these. So, right, that, that was cool. No, notoriety, I think, was a was a good driving one. Yeah, this kind of it kind of brings to mind some character with notoriety it's something or another yeah notoriety was basically the seed that that mine kind of grew off of and par- parallelogram if anything was just kind of shoehorned in um and into the into the midst of the actual story um but uh yeah so th- this so in terms of the actual writing process this week i tried to learn from last week where, where i kind of like was we were saying that maybe i was like taking it too seriously so i tried to be I did spend time thinking about it beforehand, but I tried to be more lighthearted about it and 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 like accepting of whatever ideas my brain came up with. Um, mm-hmm. and I was pretty happy with with where that led. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go. Um, like whether or not it leads to something of higher quality, I, I feel like it almost always leads to something that was more surprising and enjoyable to yourself. Because yeah, it, it, the story just kind of took its own direction, and it's not the same sort of patterns that we use to create stories from when we're crafting them as an, in their entire form. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think that's true. Did you have any other comments about the prompt before we get into the reading? Um, no, um, yeah, I didn't change too much about my um, my th- th- approach this week. Um, just kind of started. I, I've been doing it kind of back and forth between a cafe and my house and i don't think either of them are better than any other at this juncture yeah um yeah this one i wrote uh at, at my house so that i hadn't actually written the story at my house yet um but as you say the only real material difference that like setting has made so far has been the one time when i did it by hand because that, that just felt very different yeah yeah, I think the the times it's worked best for me are when I realize that I need to fit it in sometime and just like, you know, 10 or 15 minutes before. And I was like, well, I have I have half an hour free, so I'm just going to do it right now, even though I haven't thought about it. And then you kind of start it in a panic where you're like, crap, I don't have any good ideas. And then something good happens. See, I think I should probably just formally challenge myself to do that this this coming week, because I've never really started the clock with no idea like I, I always i always think of something and then i start the clock and and i think i want to just prove to myself that i don't need to do that yeah just, so just start. yeah i formally just, set that challenge for myself no matter if it's short a couple of mine and like three paragraphs yeah yeah all right well call the coin flip michael okay, i'm gonna go with heads again because it's never all right, right let's let's see let's see michael tails what yep so right. apparently it's not just a flawed yes all right okay here i go mine was called interview <clears throat> so first of all guys i just want to let you know that i'm glad to be here i want this to all be completely you know open i've got nothing to hide i mean i'm not glad to be here right nobody's glad about what happened but you know what i mean Right, so I'm happy to tell you everything. I'll, I'll just start from the top, right? So I'm working the counter. It's a typical Tuesday, and Shelly comes in through the door. And, you know, officers, I'm not ashamed to admit, 
It brightened my day whenever Shelly came through the uh, came by the store. Right? You know what I mean. She was uh, she was special. So that's all fine, nothing unusual. But then, right after Shelly, in comes Rick. And now, fellas, I don't know where you're at with your investigation here, but you gotta know. You must have heard this by now. Rick, the guy, well, he had a bit of notoriety, you know, around town. Never saw a skirt he didn't chase. Could be downright aggressive, to be honest. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, you know, but I've heard rumors. What gets my attention, what gets me worried, is when I think I see some kind of altercation at the back of the store, and then Shelly runs out of the front door and Rick follows right behind her. And I'm sitting there, I'm spooked. I don't know what to do, but I gotta do something. And maybe you guys are thinking, hey, Tommy, why didn't you call the cops, you know, call us? And I wish I had an answer for you. I guess I just felt like I had to do something right then, you know? So anyway, I follow them out of the store, abandon my post, right? But I keep my distance. You know, Rick, he was a big guy. I chased him to the tree line, across the highway, yeah, that's right, right across there. And then once you get through the trees, there's this field, wide open field, kind of a, what's the word? Like, parallelogram shaped. You know, and I see Shelly out in the field, and she's running down, you know, the long diagonal like this, right? And Rick is following her, and it it looks like he's catching up. And me, I'm not proud to admit it, but I had to hang back. I stayed in the tree line. If Rick happened to look back while I'm crossing the field, whew, I don't know what he would have (coughs) done. So eventually Shelly reaches the tree line on the opposite end of the field. Yeah, through there, that's right. And then I set out after them. I try my best to catch up. I'm feeling pretty stupid by this point, I gotta admit. How am I gonna find them in there? They've got a five minute head start on me, at least. Turns out not to be much of a problem, officers, because, well, I can hear them as soon as I get close. Screaming. And I really ain't ashamed to tell you, I hesitated to get any closer when I heard that. Screaming like that. Hmm? Sorry, yeah. Where was I? Right. So I steal myself, I man up, and I go in there, into the trees, and I see them. There's the two of them on the ground, and standing over them, the big guy, huge guy, all in black. Black boots, gloves, ski mask, the works. And he's got a hatchet, and he's just... Well, by the time I got there, there was nothing could have been done, you know? I was too late to stop it. They were both gone, and honestly, if I had stepped in, well, you'd be trying to solve a triple homicide. Right. Then the guy in black, he's finished, so he drops that hatchet, and and he leaves. He walks right by me, but doesn't see me in the shadows, thank God. And I creep up on the pair of them, Rick and and Shelly. And I, you know, I check whether they're alive. I gotta admit, I was pretty emotional, fellas. I I picked up Shelly and I shook her. Right, yeah, that's where I got all that blood on me. And then, of course, naturally, I picked up that hatchet, because I didn't want any, I didn't want that big bastard out there, excuse my French, getting the drop on me. So, so, So that's why you'll find my fingerprints on that hatchet, I expect. Not much more to tell, really. I made it back to the shop, stayed in the trees, took the long way around the field, so it took longer, 15, 30 minutes to get back, and then I called you fine gentlemen. Yes, I believe we do sell that kind of hatchet at the shop. What a funny coincidence. Excellent. Uh, was nice. Um, actual, actually, just single person talking, um, telling a story, but it, it comes together as a story because, one, he's telling story so it has a beginning middle of end and then there's kind of that line at the end where it pretty much admits that he's the one who did it right yeah uh, so it was it was an interesting way to tell the story i thought yeah this so this was a riff on on our discussion last week where we were talking about second person and, and different 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 styles like that and i was like well i don't want to just do second person straight up but but I did have that thing where I was like, what I liked about the blind sight mode was like, sometimes the character is telling you a story as if, yeah. as if, you know, talking to you. And so I was like, well, I could just write a whole thing where it's just some guy telling a story to, to the audience. Um, and, and so that was that idea. And in terms of like the actual techniques that I tried to use, like there's a lot of repetition of, of um, certain, certain phrases like idioms, like he keeps saying, I ain't, I ain't ashamed to admit it or some, some, some version right. of like, I'm not ashamed to say this. Um, and there's like that, re- repeated, repeated words like that. Yeah. I think I, I had a good mental picture of the voice, um, before you kind of read it in a bit of a voice. 
that yeah. matched pretty closely to how you were reading it. Yeah, well, that's not entirely surprising to me because I inescapably just basically wrote this with one of your character voices in my head. Yeah. I think I think you know which one. Yeah, applied, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but that that was just kind of how it came out. But but the, I, I don't think that character. I don't think Clyde would use no, it, these particular <laughs> idioms. I think it's different. Kind of a tropey character type, anyway. It doesn't really belong to Clyde. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, so, yeah. so one yeah, thing, God. one thing about it was like, I I intended there to be like a clear interpretation of what probably actually happened that you could right. get if you like went back and read through it with with the ending in mind. Um, so I wanted to ask, you know, and as, as usual, there's no there's no there, there's no wrong answer, but like like what what impression did you have of what what actually I, happened? I got the impression that the shopkeep was jealous of Rick and uh, Shelly, and maybe Rick and Shelly like went out in the woods to to romance in some manner, and he went out there and, and killed them because he didn't like it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I could I could specify more like details of what I had in mind, but that, that's 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 exactly what I wanted were to get there, across. So. Particular. So I just kind of got that from. I'm not sure exactly what I got that from, just the overall um, feel of the character and how he said he liked Shelly and how he was kind of putting down Rick. But it, were there particular hints that that led to something like that? Um, no, I mean, exactly like what you just said, it was the, the, the putting down Rick and the like more than one hint that he um, and, and like. The, the, so so one hint in there is like he's, he says that he, he comes up on them and he hears screaming. And it's like I, I intended for for him to be like reflecting on what he was actually hearing when he approached, right? Which was not not screaming, but something else that maybe like drove him crazy and made him kill them. Um, gotcha. Of course, he has a hatchet with him already. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's I'm I'm glad I'm glad that that worked out. Um, yeah, there's little hints of honesty in there. Like I was pretty emotional, fellas. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and and like toward the end is when he really like kind of throws in the more obvious excuses of of like yeah that's where the blood came from um, right yeah yeah I mean it, it, it's it's interesting like it was really this is fairly long but it was really easy to write because of the fact that it's all voice. kind of like a voice yeah right yeah. um so and and like we've talked about this before how like when you're in a character's voice you're not thinking about like the best word you're thinking about the word they would use. Right. So, if yeah. if, it, if anything, that's why I thought it was like an awkward use of parallelogram because I'm like, I don't think this character would use this word here. But I, I, it, it does it does stand out, but yeah. it's it's still like cool that you found a way to use it like that. In, yeah. Knowing the knowing the background of it, yeah. um, I found it amusing in a good way. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that's all I had to say about my story. Okay. Yeah, you, you want to go ahead and read yours? I'll go ahead and read mine. Okay. So mine was called um, Johnny at the Bat. Action, drive, passion, giving it 110%. This is what it was all about. Johnny Stravos shot a cool smirk up at the bleachers. The cheers were enthusiastic, but uncertain. The Wildcats had been here before, all too often, but they'd never quite been able to convert the winning points. But Johnny wasn't nervous. He was born for this shit. Fluorescent lighting, foldy chairs, plastic 3 by 8 card tables. This was the fucking Math Olympics, and Johnny was a mathlete. He'd known ever since third grade when he solved his first algebra problem. 3x plus 2 equals 17. Solve for x. What a rush. Five, he said, before even thinking. The answer just came so naturally. Each number had its own shape, like a Tetris piece. It was so easy to see what piece was missing. What did you say? Miss Nordstrom had gasped, dropping her chalk to the floor tiles. Five. The answer is five. After that, Johnny's notoriety grew. Algebra was nothing. Soon it was calculus, numerical methods, group theory. The Saddle Point school system had never seen anything like him, and he reveled in the glory that his genius provided him. Folks came from all over Saddle Point to watch him perform. At some point in their youth, they had dreamed that their own math skills would give them a ticket out of this hellhole of a town. But it hadn't worked out like that in the end. Johnny, though, Johnny was the real deal. But while Johnny excelled in mathematics, in English he barely skirted by. 
words, he spat in disgust. The very thought made him gag. English was all about memorizing stupid names for things. Who needed words when you could express everything of value using partial differential equations and point groups? His English teachers shook their head in frustration. But what could they do? If they failed him, he would get kicked off the mathletes, and Saddlepoint wouldn't have a shot at the championship trophy, or the alumni donations that came with it. The Math Olympics had finally arrived, and Johnny was ready. He held his number two pencil at the ready as he waited for the first question. The Master of Ceremonies opened the test booklet. This was it. Question one. What is this shape? What? C2V symmetry. Area equals base times height. What does he mean, what is this shape? To his left, a bored-looking girl from Oaksfield pressed her buzzer. A parallelogram. Words! Johnny bashed his fist against the surface of the card table. Definitions in math competitions. Was nothing sacred? The crowd gasped in astonishment. Johnny regained his composure and gave the audience a calming wave. Question two. What is the name of the theorem that relates the squares of the sides of a triang- right triangle to its hypotenuse? Johnny flipped the table. <laughs> oh, my God. So thank you for writing this, Michael, because it gives us the opportunity <laughs> to talk about humor. Okay. Because, okay. like, there's several, there's several humorous things that you're doing. The first of which, which chronologically, is, like, this fake out where it's obviously about like football or something and until suddenly you realize it's about math olympics um but you continue like this amusing alternate world where where math olympics leads to alumni donations and and where the the teachers are, are afraid to fail to fail a student because they would they would hurt the school's chances at getting the the trophy and like every reference to that is just amusing by itself in isolation because it's 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 like this funny world that doesn't actually exist where that matters. Um, yes, yeah. And then like the 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 voice, the voice of Johnny, the the you know what I mean, the the way it's written um is 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 very clear like like arrogant athlete type of mentality, which makes it even funnier that it's about math Olympics. Um and and it comes across very clearly. And yeah. And then and then like the so it's so so that's all like one style of humor where it's like oh this is this is amusing in passing and I have like a smile while reading it but I haven't laughed yet and then and then like at the end when it when it gets to the word then he bashes fist on the table and then he like regains his composure and gives the calming smile that that's its own like joke moment where if that were in a movie that would get a laugh and then and then it follows up like like it's it's the the one two there's probably a name for this but like that was almost the setup for the 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 final punchline which is the second question is also a definition um yeah and and that's it's uh yeah so i'm I'm glad you thought it was funny because i sort of wrote it and was like that was vaguely amusing but i didn't really feel like i had had been that funny with it i think if like like i i think everything until the end qualifies as as vaguely amusing but then the end is is like genuinely got a laugh out of me when the first time i read it yeah i'm glad i'm glad to hear that so so that that's cool though to to kind of think about the different kinds of humor yeah well i was ple- i think the reason maybe that was effective is just because it had kind of been set up it wasn't just like a one off amusing thing i'd i'd gone on that paragraph about english yeah which, and this was a good example of using the words to like drive the story yeah because i was thinking of ways to use skirt and i came up with like he puts you know skirting by and then i was like oh i did like if he was good at mathematics maybe he skirted by in english and then because i had that thought i was like well let's make that central to the story because he can't just win the competition because that wouldn't be a story yeah um i like that approach a lot because yeah i think yours may be out of all the stories this week yours may be the one where parallelogram is the most central because it's literally the punchline <laughs> yeah yeah i i liked that was definitely central the notoriety was was pretty pretty central all about johnny's notoriety as a you know prodigy mathlete and then the skirt really drove the, the story so i i was pleased with the integration of the words or um not, not, I, but I used them to write the story. I should say. Yeah. 
yeah right right yeah they, they they drove the story not vice versa yeah yeah um so yeah other than the humor aspect i guess i talked about like the character voice already um there was a lot of kind of um mathematics references in there <laughs> yeah I, no- I noticed the saddle I point elementary saddle point elementary um I don't know if you studied any group theory. Not really. Is Nordstrom uh, a math? No, Nordstrom is just actually it's just the name of like a teacher I had. But okay, well that's that counts. I had to come up with a name really quickly, but yeah, uh, yeah. C two V symmetry is a point group in group theory. Okay. So for, the, for the math nerds out there. Yeah. No, I I uh, never. That's that's one area I know know literally nothing about. So the um. Yeah, more more technical descriptions, but I like the I liked my description of of thinking of algebra as Tetris pieces because I think yeah. that's how I think of algebra. Yeah, that's kind of. That, I mean, that's I think that's how math can be in general. Where like it's it's symbols on the page until you actually spend some time with it, and then it becomes like tactile, almost things that move around in your your mind. Um, yeah. really, I think actually different people perceive it differently. Um, <laughs> interesting conversation that probably not on this podcast yeah <laughs> well, well I, I think about algebra yeah well, well no I, I was just gonna say like the the bit where he goes in the digression where he's like c2v symmetry air equals space time like like it doesn't matter if you understand what c2v symmetry is you 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 parse that as like he's he's muttering to himself in technical language when the actual answer is just a simple definition yeah. And he's overlooking it. That's the joke. So, and, and that works regardless of whether you know what that thing is. Another aspect of this is my is my frustration with like math competitions uh-huh. and like that, or, right, yeah. or math classes and definition, and not like problem solving, which was Johnny's frustration as well. This was a this was a personal story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I yeah I was I was going for the athlete thing. I thought the name was kind of a fun. I, I thought that the name worked. Kind of came up with it, Johnny Stravos, but he sounded like a quarterback or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, yeah. the plastic card tables I associated with like cheap uh, high school, like act, things that were set up in gyms. Right. Yeah, I, I imagine this all happening in a basketball court. Yeah. I don't know if you ever actually said that or not. That, yeah, I don't think I said that, but um, that was definitely what I was going with. And so I said, like, fluorescent lighting first, because, like, yeah, uh-huh. that's a gym. And then foldy chairs. Yeah, I guess you do have those at a basketball court. And then three times eight for card tables. No, not really. What is this? What's going on here? It's the fucking Math Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that was all I had. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to comment on the fact that like the worst thing you can do to a joke is to explain it and now we've explained your right now, that's your, yes. your your piece of comedy but that's the point that's what we're trying to do here so it wasn't really it was really a joke anyway it was oh, all yeah all just writing just writing just, just writing all right um yeah so that was our stories and we got some really great stories on the reddit as mm-hmm. usual, I'm I'm just getting used to it now that everyone's stories are going to be awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, do you want to start off? Yeah, I'll, I'll. Okay, sure. Um, Ren Roby submitted uh, another beautiful story um, about a cellist uh, playing the uh, Edward Elgar cello con- concert- concerto, um, and he was he's he's used to live in. I'm not sure if it was specifically mentioned, but somewhere in the Soviet realm. Yeah. And then he came to America and um, his whole life has kind of been this this music since that point. And then he, it, I think it heavily implied that he dies at the end and then he drops his bow and the music stops. Is that how you interpreted it as well? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, he's, he's really old. He's like you said, he's, he's been, this is all he has and and it's like it's kind of a kind of a sadness <clears throat> not just that he was dying but i almost got the sense that maybe he kind of um like wished there had been something else besides yeah. devotion to music 
yeah right like his his life does not seem terribly full um and 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 he he's he knows they're gonna like there's that bit where he's like they're they're gonna stop asking him to come soon because his playing is gonna is gonna not be as good because he just can't keep it up yeah can't keep up the physical re- regimen of it and and then it's like then he'll have nothing and like there's there's definite tone of, of regret there he's, he's tired of of the concerto and the, and the cello but he doesn't know what else yeah to do at this stage yeah yeah so that's why he just dies yeah so yeah i thought that was really really tragic yeah yeah it's was, it was really good yeah um yeah so i i'm gonna i'll talk about the next one this is from uh user burn victim 42 um and this this was an interesting one because it's it's one of those ones it's, it's like the type of story where there's an intentional note of confusion about what what exactly is going on you kind of have to figure it out um but basically it's like a uh, this the character comes to school and you know and what you eventually realize is that all the other students are are like are are like either squares or just like shapes with uh um with symmetry or with right angles or whatever but um but 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 this character Alex is is a is a parallelogram who who has crooked angles, um, um, and uh, the, it it has that kind of like surrealism to it, and and the author specifically says that um they were somewhat inspired by uh, by by your hose election story where where it's like a surrealist take on it basically, um and so I thought that was that was fun. Yeah, the um, there there was kind of mixed use of pronouns there. Yeah, sometimes she, and sometimes he. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't exactly sure what to make of that, but I think that's I think that's fine. It's one of those things where people can people can it it, it urges you to think about it. Right. Um. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they offer like an interpretation in their comment, actually. But one of my favorite things about writing is that you can sort of make your own interpretation. Um, yeah, yeah, but if, yeah. if you want, you can go read, you can go read their interpretation. Um, do you want to do the next one? Uh, yeah. So the next one was was Fawn Mod, um, which was a a um, absurdist story. I think is the best way to call it. Um, and there's just the scene that I I don't know what it is really, but there's like a baron and a lord, and there's dancing involved. But then it's also um, a battle breaks out, and uh, it was just hilariously written with with Fawn Mod's usual humorous choice of words, um, like boresome groaned the baroness again. Uh, and there's something about yeah, it lifted his considerable mass from the chair. Um, what did you make of this one? Yeah, um, like it, it, it's it, it, I had a very clear idea of like what is happening in the scene, although what is happening in the scene makes no sense. So, <laughs> and I mean, I think that's like you said, it's just sort of a, an absurdist yeah thing. I, I don't. Mean, I don't yeah. think there's meant to be any meaning behind. Then why are you wearing a parallelogram? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, th- like that's I always when, I always think about the Fawn Mod Fawn Mod's uh, story doesn't have to make any sense actually because the prose is so good that you're right. you're convinced you read something brilliant regardless of uh, the content. Right. So um, yeah, there was there was there were a couple of particular sentences when i read it that i thought were really good and i'm trying to scan over it right now can't find them so that's unfortunate because i wanted to point those out um i like the name of the prim ladies house of monumental acrobatics and related consortedly achievements (laughs) yeah yeah which is not a phrase i would have come up with yeah I think it was just this this passage here, actually, where it's describing the room and, and the two sentences: uh, "Light filtered through silvered panes and sun shoots, candles dripped wax on carpets of the skins of long forgotten prizes." Yeah. Um, and and 
like first i just like the 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 word sun shoots and and skins of like skins of prizes for some reason is i find that to be a great turn of phrase um yeah cool uh yeah so the next one i will talk about is from good sir satanist and it's it's this very interesting like kind of futuristic um well certainly futuristic um uh space battle basically and almost the whole thing actually is is this space battle with with, with kind of some dialogue um and and like interleaved into the space battle do you kind of understand why the space battle is happening so so it's it's one of those like cold open on the on the fighting and and then and then you kind of figure out what's going on as you as you read um and uh and it has a i think a pretty cool like build up toward um toward kind of a climactic uh ending and then it kind of successfully nails that using this device that they've implemented throughout the whole thing where the um onomatopoeia the onomatopoeia device exactly that was a that was neat little neat little trick i can't even say why that works the way it does that's an interesting it's always neat to discover these things where i'm like why why does that work why is that more fun than just like writing the you know the guns fired or whatever it's just kind of like a unique way of looking at something yeah um then it kind of doing it that way gives it its own feel yeah i think so i think you're right that's something about uniqueness i guess um yeah i think there was is that it? That's all the stories this week, I think. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean that's and that's a great, it's a great haul this week. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that basically wraps things up, Michael. Let's spin the wheel and find out what our words are for next week's story. All right. Here we go. The words are blade, blanket, and emotion. Cool. Blade, blanket, and emotion. Awesome. See, like, so just give you some action stories. But yeah, not said that. I'm already, I'm already getting images, which was not true last week. So, <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, you can post your own story submissions to the Reddit at reddit.com/r/so-called writers, and we look forward to reading them. Thanks. <laughs>